Have you ever been texting with a guy and things go cold or maybe you want to text with a guy, but you're not sure if you're doing it right or you want to make sure that you're not screwing things up with him? Today, we're going to be talking about some of the biggest texting mistakes that women make that can kill a man's attraction for you. My name is Matthew Coast. And welcome to the Commitment Connection. If this is your first time to our channel, make sure that you go down and hit the subscribe button to make sure that you get all of our, our videos on all the cool topics that we talk about here because we have lots of cool things that are coming up. So today we're going to be talking about the seven texts that kill a man's attraction for you. So are you, if you have a problem, if you're dating a guy and you want to make sure you don't screw it up, or maybe you're kind of looking in the past and you're saying, was it something I did on text message? Or maybe you've been kind of fighting for a man's attention over text message. That's one of the ones that I hear about a lot where a guy is kind of not doing what a woman wants him to do, wants, wants him to do. And so she'll start trying to do all these different things in order to to kind of get his interest. And sometimes she's actually pushing him away when she doesn't even know that she's pushing him away. And so here's the seven text message that we're going to be talking about. If you're here with us right now, make sure that you say hi in the chat and also make sure to tell us where you're watching this video from in the world. We have women all over the world that watch this. So let us know where you're from. So the first one is the one word text messages. And you, know, you maybe you've done this one before. Maybe guys have done this to you before where you they're just like, okay, or sure, or <laughs> yeah, or whatever, right? And, and sometimes a guy will ask you a big question and then you'll just leave one word answer to him. And, and the reason why this can be bad is because he feels like you're either really boring or you're no longer really interested in him, or maybe you're like distracted by something else. One of the things that I talk about a lot on this channel, because there's a lot of kind of bad information out there about showing disinterest, trying to make a guy feel like you're not really interested in him when you are, that's all bad advice. You, you want a guy to know that you're interested in him, but it's you're not trying to make him you're not trying to show them that you're too interested in him. And one of the problems with the one word text is that a lot of times guys will feel like you're just not interested anymore, right? You're just sending a one word text message back to his, <laughs> his text, whatever he sent you. And so a lot of times he'll, he'll either feel like you're not interested or like it's pulling teeth to try to have a conversation with you. And it's better if, if you're doing that because you don't have time or you're doing that because you want to actually meet him in person or talk to him over the phone or something like that. Guys aren't mind readers and it's better to communicate with him what you want than just sending him like a one word text message that he has no idea how to interpret when you do that. And so when you're texting and you're, you're having a conversation with him, a better way, well, you know, one way to do it instead is to communicate if, if you have some kind of need or something where you want to have a longer conversation or you want to meet in person, which we'll be talking about in a little bit, it's better to communicate with him. Or if you're texting and you're having a conversation with him, it's better to pace his interest, which we'll also talk about in a minute here. And so number two, text message number two that kills attraction is the complicated meetup text. And <laughs> Girls do this all the time to guys where you say something like, just tell me when you want to meet up. And then you go, that doesn't work. And then he suggests another place that doesn't work. That doesn't work. And, and you're trying to get him to say when or where or something about where to meet up. And then you just shut it down and you're like, nope, that's not going to work. And you don't kind of give any more information as to what does work or, or whatever. You're just, just trying to get him to, to put all the work in, which 
I understand and, and I, I get the, the whole investment thing and it's important for a guy to invest in you. However, when you're doing it like this, it kind of shuts him down and it makes him feel like he's kind of like running in circles in order to, to get things working with him or, or he might feel like you're actually playing games with him, which is kind of the worst thing that you can make a guy that you're actually interested in feel. If he feels like you're playing games with him and he's a quality man or he's a mature man or he's a smart man, one of the two things, one of two things is going to happen. He's either going to start playing games back with you, which sucks, or he's going to lose interest completely, which is kind of what we're talking about here. And so it's one of those things where we're talking about, tell me where you want to go. That doesn't work. I don't like that. That doesn't work. And so basically he wants to pursue you, but he doesn't, and he wants to take the lead, but he doesn't want to feel like he's running in circles for no reason. If you get what we're talking about here, say, I get it. I got it. I get it. So text message number three is being far too boring. So if you're having a conversation with a guy and it, you, you don't want to make it feel like it's really boring because you'll start having this conversation and then it'll be like, okay, well, what are we even going to be talking about? This is kind of just a boring conversation that we're having. I'm not having any fun. And then he'll feel like he doesn't want to talk to you anymore. And he might end up feeling like that's how it's going to be when you're actually around each other. And so I just want to kind of emphasize, and I'm going to be talking about this in a little bit. You don't want to be having long conversations, especially when it's at the beginning stages of a relationship, but also when you're in a relationship, you don't want to really have long conversations over text message. There's too many problems that happen with text message conversations. He doesn't understand what you're talking about. You can't really emphasize things. You might say something and it might be taken the wrong way. And it, the magic happens when you're in person. When you meet with each other, that's when the magic really happens. That's when he can feel kind of that feminine energy that you have about you. That's when he starts, things start really kicking in. It's, you're not just this kind of metaphorical human being on this, on this phone or whatever that you're texting back and forth with, but you're actually this living human being that he gets to meet and he, he can see and he can smell and he can talk to and he can touch. And that's, that's really what you want. You don't want anything that kind of discourages him from actually having a real conversation in person. And that's what being really too boring can, can do when you're texting. If you do want to have a real conversation or he's kind of pushing you to have a real conversation over text message, what you want to do is add emotion to it and add emotion to it in the right way. And I talk about this in one of the last live streams that I did, but the easiest way that you can do this is by adding emojis. And, and as a woman, it's easier and far more attractive to add emojis to the conversation than if you're a guy and you're adding emojis. And so you can add emojis. I mean, you don't necessarily want to make it all emojis unless you guys are having like an emoji conversation or an emoji war, which can be kind of fun if you're having fun and being playful and you, you kind of get into it and, and it, that kind of just spontaneously happens or whatever. It can be a lot of fun to do that, but just add emojis to your conversation. It can be a lot of fun. If you're telling a joke, what you can do is when you tell the joke, add like a laugh until you cry emoji right afterwards. That way he knows it's a joke. You can add flowers. There's lots of different kind of emojis that you can add to the conversation that you're having and it'll lighten it up. It'll create emotion and it'll feel, you'll feel it. You'll see kind of these emojis on there and it'll remind him of your femininity. It'll remind him of emotion, which are the things that you do want him to experience. And just adding emojis to your conversation over text message can take a completely boring text message and make it fun, make it interesting, make it more alive. So the next one that I want to talk about is the lead text, something I call the lead text. And, and this is really when you're trying to take the lead in 
the text message conversation or you're trying to make something happen when you're texting him. And I, and I have women that do this all the time in our community and some of our clients, they'll try to take the lead. They'll try to like push for a meetup or they'll try to get him to engage with you. So she'll try to get him to engage with her in a way that he's not really ready to engage with. You want him to, you want him to come to you and you don't want to try to force it because when you try to force it, that's when he kind of pulls back and kind of runs away. Just remember guys are like cats, right? If you <laughs> really attractive guys, guys that have a lot of things going on, a lot of times they're like cats, right? And, and they'll come to you when they're ready and they'll, they'll uh, come to you when, when they want to come to you. They aren't going to come to you when you're kind of chasing them down. If you've ever had a cat before and you try to chase the cat, you'll, you'll know that it only makes him run further away from you. And so you want him to come and you want to be alluring and you, you want to, he'll eventually come to you which is another reason. Another thing that I talk about is, is having a full life, dating other people. When you're dating other men and you're, even if like, I don't recommend like sleeping with lots of men, but dating lots of men, what it'll do is it'll kind of suck any of that neediness or any of that insecurity or any of those other things out because it's not like, Oh, I've just got this one guy and I've got to make it happen with him. And so I'm going to try to force it to happen and I'm going to start manipulating him over text message. And finally, I'm going to get him to come out and I'm going to get him to do all these things. You know, there's nothing wrong with let it, like I said earlier, there's nothing wrong with letting him know that you like him or encouraging him to talk to you or meet with you or any of those kinds of things. Where the problem lies is when you start pushing him to do it because it starts feeling gross to him. It starts feeling kind of masculine to him. And there, there's kind of a normal progression that happens in most kind of relationships from meeting to actually being in a relationship. And that's that the men initially start pursuing the woman and he starts leading things and he's moving things forward. And eventually a woman's kind of biological instincts start kicking in where she wants to kind of be more in communication and she wants to be more in relationship. And so she'll start reaching out and start doing all these things. And if it kind of gets out of hand <laughs> in some ways, what, what will happen is that she'll start leading things and you don't want to do that. You don't want that part. You want to kind of continue to allow a space to be there for him to come into where he's kind of moving things forward. He's still leading things. He's still doing all that stuff because that's where he starts investing in you and feeling like it's a real relationship and you're actually committed to each other. So if you get what we're talking about here, make sure that you say, I get it. I get what you're talking about. If you have any questions, make sure that you throw the questions in the chat and I will go over them at the end of the video. And so the next text message that you don't want to send <laughs> is the long apology text. And so many times women do this when they think they've done something wrong or they didn't or, but, but they didn't, they didn't actually do something wrong, but they think they did something wrong or for things that aren't really a big deal. And this is really another reason not to have a long conversations over text, right? Because things can get kind of out of control. You're not really sure how he responded to it because it's over text message. Maybe he doesn't respond to it. That's, that's a big one where it happens is you'll send a text message. He doesn't respond. And you're like, it's been an hour since I responded. Did I offend him? Was there something? And then you start getting in your head and all these things start going on. And you're like, Oh my God, what should I do? And you like, you know, almost send six different text messages, but you're like, no, that sounds horrible. Then you're almost going to send another one. No, oh, that's, that one sounds horrible too. And then finally you, you write some text message. You're like, Hey, I'm sorry if I said something stupid and you send it over to him. And he's like, what are you talking about? My mom came over and I had to talk to her for a little bit or <laughs> my brother, I ended up needing to call my brother because we had this thing or whatever. Right. And so you want to kind of avoid that, which, you know, avoid long, avoid apology, long apology texts, avoid 
kind of getting into too many kind of uh, verbal conversations over text message, especially initially. If you really want to have a conversation, do it over the phone. And it's better to to use the phone, the text messages for meetup. That's really the main thing that you should be using text messages for is getting him to meet up. And I, I was going to talk about that later. And I guess, I guess I just talk about it right now. All right. So the next one, what are we on? Number six. Number six is the giant story text. So you want to avoid just oversharing over text messages. And again, like we kind of talked about earlier, things can be misinterpreted. If you send him a long text, it's like he's got to sit down and read it. And really what you want, like I said, is to meet him in person. You want to be getting him in person. That's where the real connections happen. So if he asks questions where there's a long text answer to it, what you might want to say is, hey, that's a really long story. I'll tell you the next time we meet or I'll tell you if we talk on the phone or whatever you're, you're, you want the kind of next step to be. Hopefully it's meeting in person unless it's kind of a long distance thing. Although if you haven't met, I'm just going to throw a disclaimer out there because we have so many women that have been talking about this recently. It's the meeting a guy online and then having this long distance relationship where a guy doesn't actually exist. Don't do that, right? You want to meet people in person. So avoid these things where you're, you're having relationships where you haven't actually met a guy before. And if a guy is out of town and you want to meet him, just let him know and say, hey, look, when you get in town, I'd love to meet with you and talk to you. However, I don't do kind of the, the online friendship, online relationship thing without meeting a guy because that's, that's where things can get in trouble. And a lot of times women will end up getting in weird situations because of that. So giant story texts, avoid giant story texts, use them to kind of create more mystery and help him feel like he wants to come out and meet you and be like, look, you want to, you want to talk about that? Come and meet me. And then the next in the last one, text message number seven that can kind of ruin attraction is what I call date texting, which is kind of in, in alignment with all the other texts that we've been talking about, which is texting like you're on a date with each other, right? And you're texting and finding out all this information. You're learning all these things about him and you're trying to do it over text message. You want to leave the mystery there, right? You want to, you want him to initiate meeting up with you and finding out about you in person, because that's when, if you have anything going on that's weird in your life where you're like, oh, I'm not even sure how I'm going to talk about this and how do I approach this subject, then when you actually meet, it's easier to kind of talk about it and explain it without it being kind of this digital kind of conversation that you're having. Like I said, your main goal should be getting together in some, some kind of way. And so you don't want to be texting with the goal of creating a relationship over text message. You want to, you want to get out in person. You want to meet people in person. And like I said, in our last live stream, I know there's some women out there that are kind of scared and they're freaked out and they're like, Oh, well, I don't really trust meeting a man out in person. Well, you should be meeting men one in public places. Don't ever meet a guy. Don't ever allow him to come over to your house. I, I, talk to women sometimes who do this. And there's some women in our community who talk about doing this where they will be like, Oh yeah. And let a guy come over and pick them up or meet them at their house. It's, it's crazy. If you don't know a guy really well, he shouldn't be coming over to your house at all. Right. It's just, you're sending all the wrong signals by letting him do that. And you should be meeting out in a public place where you're it, it's safe right? It's safe. And you know that it's a controlled environment and there's nothing bad that can happen. And you're having a conversation and getting to know each other in that public place. Being in person is where the magic happens. So focus on meeting in person. All right. So principles when texting, let him come to you. Let him come to you. Stop trying to go to him. Stop trying to find out what he's thinking over text message, how he feels, all that kind of stuff. If you're out meeting other guys and dating other guys, it shouldn't be a problem anyway. Pace his interest. 
If he's showing you a lot of interest and he's talking a lot to you over text message, you can do, you can feel free to do that as well with him. But if he starts pulling back, pull back as well and just let him come to you and just pace whatever it is that he's doing with you. Use texting as a main tool to meet in person because that's the best. If you, it, there's nothing wrong with sending a little text here and there. If you want to just making him smile or sending him, getting him something where he starts thinking about you or sending him a meme or something every once in a while, if you want to, however, don't go overboard on it because especially if you're not in a relationship yet, what you want to do is allow him to move forward and, and come to you and, and just allow him to kind of lead the relationship and lead what's going on and pursue you and chase you and push for a meetup. That's what you want to do. All right. So that's that. So hello everybody from all these amazing different places, Michigan, Cali, Philadelphia, Iran. There's somebody watching from Iran. That's amazing. Delaware, Toronto, Egypt. Nice. Kentucky, Indiana, Australia, Julie tree. Is that, that's your name. <laughs> I thought that's where you're from. Germany. Awesome. We have so many people from all over the place. South Dakota. Yeah. Texting can often get misinterpreted. Yeah. Like Sheila says, emojis really do work. Yep. You need emojis if you're going to be talking a lot over text message. Got it. Get it. You wish you had heard it two weeks ago. Yeah. Well, you've heard it now and you can use it moving forward. And that's really what the important thing is. Wow. South Africa. Nice. Monique doesn't, doesn't know. Monique doesn't know what I'm saying. The, the microphone's on the microphone's on. So how to nourish a long distance relationship. That's a, that's a long answer. We'll talk more about that kind of stuff in another video specifically for long distance relationships. Yeah, you always, so, and another thing that you want to do with dates is try to go on dates where you can leave, right? Like you can get out of the date if you have to, if, if you're in a situation where, a, you, you go on this date and you're stuck with him for a long time. It ends up being weird or awkward or whatever. You want to be able to get out, right? And so sometimes going on dinner dates isn't necessarily the best thing. I, I know that when you do go on a dinner date, you end up learning a lot about a guy. And so you might want to push that off. If you're, if you're just going on a first date or whatever, you might want to push off the dinner dates if that's what he wants to do for a different date if you haven't actually met or you're meeting for the first time and you only had a small interaction the first time that you met with him and just set it up so that if have something that's going on, here's an, here's another first date or a date plan in general is have something going on afterwards so that you have some kind of constraint to the amount of time that you're going to be there. And so if things go end up going really well, then it's like, okay, well, you know what? I'm, I'm just, I'm having so much fun right now. Like I'm just going to hang out with you. However, if things aren't going very well, then there's a great excuse that you have to end up leaving and doing something else. If that's what you want to do. What if he texts you telling his mother, telling you his mother isn't interested in you and shuts down? So first off, my question would be, why would he care about whether his mother is interested in you? What does that mean? What, you know, if you're, if his mom isn't interested, does he really care that much about whether his mom is interested in you? Where are you from Ebony VL? Where, <laughs> where are you from where this guy really cares? Are you from the United States? Or are you from somewhere else? Miss Paranoid Android says, love your new hair, Matt. Thank you. I get some people that love it, some people that hate it. I get a lot of compliments from here about it, although <laughs> I get I get some other people there. I, I, I have a friend of mine who hates my hair. She absolutely hates it. She 
She thinks my old haircut was so much better. Although I appreciate you liking my new hair. What if you meet a guy and he likes you, but wants to meet up every day after that? How do I pace him without offending him? Well, do you have other things going on in your life? <laughs> right? I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to meet up with a guy every day after that, as long as there's a lot of kind of like sexual tension, there's a lot of fire and kind of passion in the kind of relationship and there's a lot of chemistry there and you really like each other. I, I don't think there's any problem with going out every single day with each other. If you wanted to do that, as long as you're pacing the interaction, the time that you're spending together out, then it's, it's not a big deal. And, and you're making sure that you're focusing on one main thing. And that main thing is connection and making sure that he's opening his heart, that he's investing, that he's the one leading, that he's the one pushing things forward, that he's the one in his masculine energy and doing all those things, all those principles that we talk about in some of our other videos and in some of our other and some of our programs and stuff that we have here, by the way, if, if you haven't, if you're not a part of the goddess club yet, there's a link below this video where you can get, join the goddess club for free. You'll get a bunch of cool programs that are in there, a bunch of advice. There's texting stuff. There's the feminine texting secrets program that I put in there, document report that I put in there that you can go through. There's a whole bunch of free stuff that you get and the, it's you, you can ask questions to our coach in an anonymous forum where you can have any questions that you want answered. If you want to join, there's a link below this video in the description should be in the description where you can join for free. If it's not there, go to the goddess club.com or the goddess community, excuse me, the goddess community.com and go there and join our club for free. Right. If <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, so AZ girl says you're smart. My friends give terrible, most people's friends give terrible advice. That's you should not listen to your friend. Most friends are well-meaning, right? They want the best for you. However, a lot of times they have no idea what's going on. Many times they're not in good relationships. Sometimes if they are, they don't know how they got in it. <laughs> right. They have no idea what they're doing. And so you want people that are on the outside and they're analyzing this and they know what they're doing and they've helped other people. You want that kind of a person to help you. And maybe it's me, maybe it's some of our other coaches, maybe it's not, maybe it's somebody else, right. That is out there. But what you want to do is you want to find people that actually know what they're talking about and you know that they know what they're talking about and they have a proven track record of helping other people. And many times that's not your friends. And even if they've done it successfully, sometimes they have no idea what they're doing and they just tell you things and that's not actually what they're doing, right? That's the biggest thing. People say things and they have no idea what they're doing, but they tell you it and they think that they know what they're doing, but they're just kind of doing whatever they do. So hello from California. Hunter says, if you like your hair and you look nice, no one else needs to vote. I agree. If I like my hair and I do like my hair, doesn't matter. doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Cameroon. Yeah, that's what I thought. Ebony Cameroon. He tells his mom about us and she denies the union. He just texts to give you the info and without any reason he shuts down. Well, like I said, what you should be doing is you should be out there dating other men, right? And having a good life and enjoying your life. One of the things that I do recommend here, and some people, some women think this is like a young person's thing, but I, I don't think it's a young person's thing at all. I think it's a lifestyle thing and you can make it a young person's thing or not or whatever, but that's getting on different social media channels and having a live kind of social media kind of presence where you're connecting with guys. And, and the one that I personally recommend, and I'll tell you why I recommend it is Instagram. And the reason I recommend Instagram, instead of giving guys your number, instead of talking to guys over text message, I recommend that you give them your Instagram information and that if they want to contact you, that they contact you through Instagram and then have pictures from your life that show great aspects of you having fun, doing things, going out, you know, experiencing life on your Instagram account. 
That way, one, you can learn more about what he's go- what he has going on, and you can kind of showcase your life and how amazing and awesome you are. And then what you want to do is just talk to them through that. And oh, so for Ebony, for your situation, you need to go out and date other guys, right? Yeah, he shut down. Well, okay. You know, maybe you guys aren't meant for each other. Maybe he needs to stop listening to everything that his mom says to him and actually grow up and become a man and live his own life. And he's not going to do that if he's listening to what his mom says and whatever his mom says goes, well, okay, go out and find other guys to date. And if he ends up deciding that maybe he actually wants to be a man and stop letting his mom dictate who he dates and gets into relationships with, he can come back to you and pursue you. And in the meantime, you'll be dating other guys and finding great guys to be with that you're not, and you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. That's my recommendation. So Stephanie says she's watching from Italy. Awesome. I know you're probably a dude who doesn't like me texting as well, but I just got to tell you, you're such a cool guy and also very sweet. Is that, is that an example text that you're, <laughs> are you, <laughs> what, what are you talking about there? All right. So AZ girl says everything you have said makes so much sense. You would think it's common knowledge, but once your emotions. Yeah. So one of the reasons why coaching is so valuable and coaching works is because you can't, you, you can't see the whole picture when you're inside the frame, right? You're in the frame and you're experiencing your life and it's good to have an outside perspective. Somebody that's on the outside looking in and that person, he or she can see what's going on to you with you. And they're professionally trained in this and they've seen it happen over and over and over again. They know what you need to do in order to work through your own stuff and get into a state where you're connecting with men in the way that you want to connect with a man. And there's also actually a lot of misinformation out there. The, the mainstream media pushes all kinds of nonsensical information that, that doesn't, that isn't in your best interest. And so what you want to do is just find somebody that really resonates with you, that has the goal, like our commitment connection here, we talk about real relationships. Sometimes we get women that come to our community and they're like, Oh, well, I'm in this friend with benefits situation. What should I do? Oh, I've done videos on that before, but that's not our specialty. We help women get into real relationships because I feel like that's where the, the, what most people really want. It's not even that I feel that way. It's, it's proven that most people want that men and women. We, what we really want are real relationships. And the problem is, is that we're stuck in these friend with benefits, superficial relationships, because we allow ourselves to do that. We're too afraid to deal with our own issues and get into real relationships. And so what you want to do is find somebody whose message you really resonate with and the way that they talk really kind of makes sense to you and just follow their advice and go through their systems and figure out what's going on through what they do and see if it works for you or not. And if it does, that's awesome. So English Rose says, hi from India. It's three fifty in the morning here. <laughs> awesome. So Miss Parent, you were talking to me, huh? <laughs> you were talking. <laughs> Wait a second. Let me go over this. Let me go over this again. I know you're probably a dude who doesn't like me texting as well, but I just got to tell you, you're such a cool guy and also very sweet. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying such nice things to me. I love compliments. Anybody, any, if anybody else out there wants to give me a compliment, I love compliments. So if you've got a compliment for me, I appreciate it. I think you're, all of you are wonderful and amazing as well. And I love hearing all the things that you guys, <laughs> that, that, that you have going on. You're really what makes this community and our channel thrive. And I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you. And I appreciate all everybody that allows me to be on this journey with you, because really this is a journey. I was talking to this men's dating coach the other day. And we were kind of having this conversation about 
the different journeys that men and women go through when they're dating. And for a lot of men, especially when they're first kind of getting into the, the kind of dating industry, if they haven't been taught a lot of this stuff, if they don't really have their stuff together, this can be like a 10 year journey for them to really find a woman that they're attracted to, who's also attracted to them, where they want to get into a great relationship. And so I'm not sure where I was going with that. <laughs> I was talking about that. Okay. So Judy says, does she let the other guy see that she's dating other guys that can make a guy jealous or backfire? Well, you, you don't want to make it like, oh, I'm dating these other guys here. I'm going to throw it in your face that I'm dating a bunch of other men. What you want to do is make it like, hey, I live this cool lifestyle right? You're on, let's, let's talk about this Instagram thing, right? That we we're talking about before you're saying, Hey, I, I live this awesome lifestyle. Here's pictures of me having fun. Sometimes it's with a guy. Sometimes it's with a girl. Sometimes it's with a bunch of people. Sometimes it's with all these different people, right? You're not telling them that you're dating. You're not lying to them either, but you're not kind of throwing it in their face, right? If you throw it in their face, they're going to feel like you're playing games with and when you start playing games with a guy or he thinks that you're starting to play games with a guy, like I said, there's one of two things that's going to happen. Either one, he's going to start playing games with you as well, which is not what you want at all because game relationships based on games are horrible relationships or two, he's going to walk away. And if he's a mature, smart man, he's not going to want to deal with games because games suck. Being in a relationship with games sucks. So don't do that. Don't, don't throw it in their face. It, it can definitely backfire and push them away. Absolutely. If he's a mature, responsible man, smart man, it, it, there's a very high probability chance that throwing in his face that you're dating other people will push him away. Now, if he asks you about it, just say, look, you know, if, if a guy asks you if you're dating other people, first thing that you want to do is you want to have fun with it, right? So what you might want to do is be like, well, what? I'm, why are you asking? Are you are you my are you my boyfriend? <laughs> right? Are you my boyfriend? Are we are we in a relationship together? Right? Because I didn't know that if we were. Are are you checking up on me? Do you want to do, do you want to know? Do you, do you want me to run by you all the guys that I date? Are you going to be my dad now? And you want, you want, you want me to bring them over to the house and make sure that they're a quality guy for you before I'm allowed to, you know, you can have fun with it. Right. And just, and just play with it. And if he's like, Oh, I'm serious. Right. Like, Oh, are you, you know, and it's just like, look, I, it's, it's, you know, unless we're in a relationship, it's not really, it, it's not really for me to talk about, you know, I'm, I'm open to seeing other guys. And unless we become exclusive, I'm going to, continue to be open to seeing other guys if, if that does happen. Right. And so you're not really giving him a straight answer about it. Cause it's, it's really none of his business. You know, if you're not exclusive with a guy, it's really none of his business, whether you're dating other people or not. And you should be dating other people so that you're not putting all your eggs in one basket and becoming needy, dating lots of guys and just going on lots of dates and having guys pursue you and, and feeling attractive and kind of having that happen around you makes your, it, it just, it like squeezes all the, all the neediness out of you, right? It squeezes all the insecurity out of you because all of a sudden you start feeling from, from this place of abundance where you're like, Oh yeah, there's lots of guys out there, you know? And if this guy's acting like an idiot, that's great. There's other guys. And if he wants to start acting appropriately, he can come back and come into my life and do it in a way that works for me. All right. So Brian Davis says, hi, Matt. I like this guy. Bri Brianne, sorry. Brianne Davis says, hi, Matt. I like this guy at my gym. He compliments me sometimes and is always super friendly, giving me high fives. I've complimented him as well. I've hit, called him handsome before, but I <laughs> you finish, you stop the, the comment. There's no more to that comment. I can't answer the question if there's no, there's no question there. Hi from the Philippines. Prissa says you're cute and I love your programs. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I thank you. So, thank you so much. It warms my heart to know that you love my programs and that you think I'm cute. 
And, you know, I just want to say that flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> if you're complimenting me, I love it. I love compliments. So keep them coming. Keep them coming, guys. <laughs> I think you're amazing as well. I think all of you are amazing. So thank you for being here with me. Julie Tree says, love your wisdom. Thanks. Thanks, Julie Tree. I appreciate that. Brianne, you have to finish your your convert your comment. <laughs> you didn't you didn't finish your comment. I can't answer the the comment if you don't finish it. So Vic says, "Hey from Atlanta, I'm dating guys from online websites like Tinder and Tagged and the <laughs> what? Like Tinder and Tagged and the phone conversations are great. However, they won't move to meet up." in person. What's with that? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of guys that are just like, it, it could be a couple of different things. One is that there's a lot of guys that are trying to do the same thing that a lot of women are doing, right? Which is the whole, like, I'm just going to get to know him over the phone or over texting or over whatever, instead of actually meeting up with this person in real life. Right. And so they'll just wait. And then some guy that knows what he's doing is, will hopefully come along and be like, Hey, let's meet you know, and then you'll end up meeting up with him immediately. And you're like, I don't know. There's all these other guys just want to talk on the phone. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what their problem is. Right. As long as he knows that you're interested, as long as he knows that you're actually interested in him, which it sounds like maybe, I don't know. It did, You haven't really talked about that or not, but if, if he knows that you're interested, if you're like, yeah, you know, I just, I love, I just, I'm feeling I'm, I'm really enjoying talking to you. I, I really have a great, I'm really having a great time talking to you right now and just letting him know that you're, you like him and you know, it's great that you're so cute or what, whatever, right? Like just flirting, having fun conversation, teasing with him. Like I said, though, if, if you want, my suggestion is that you use texting and e even the phone just for, you know, meeting up or whatever, you know, don't try to have, don't try to create a relationship over the phone. Don't try to create a relationship online. Don't try to create a relationship over texting, right? That's not, that's not where the magic happens. The magic happens when you're in person. That's where all the magic can happen. Cause that's, that's when, cause a lot of times what ends up happening is people try to get into these relationships over the phone, over texting, over online or whatever. And then they end up meeting with people and they're like, Oh, well, it's a totally different thing when we're actually together. It's like not even really what was happening before. And so you want to, you want to focus on meeting up in person. And if, if he's not willing to kind of step up to the plate and meet in person, then you know, there's only so much you can do, right? There's only so much you can do with nursing, nursing the baby bird to health, right? If he's too chicken to meet up with you in person, that's, that's his own problem. If it's a problem with the actual conversation that you're having and what's going on in the conversation, that's a completely different thing. It could be that you're turning them on over the conversation over the phone. It's hard to really know without knowing more information. Cause there are, like I said, a lot of guys that'll just, you know, they're, they're like, some, some guys are like waiting for a sign. Right. And, and this, this is actually what they used to teach back in the day in the men's dating industry is that they would, they, they would teach guys to look for signs. That's, that's what I, when I first got into the men's dating industry back in 2005, that's what they taught me was there or 2004 that that's what they taught me was they're like, okay, you need to look for these indications that she's interested in you. And then you can move forward. Right. Which in, in my opinion for guys is just horrible advice. It's just absolutely horrible advice. And it's horrible advice for you too. You want to assume that if he's talking to you, he's attracted to you. If he's around you, he's attracted to you. If he's taking you out on dates, he's attracted to you. So that's what you want to assume. But it's possible that he may be looking for indications that you're interested in him before or indications that you want to meet him before he actually asks you out on that date. Or maybe he's just like, I don't know. So that's that. McKenna says, do you have tips to get guys? I have all kinds of tips to get guys. I've got a whole YouTube channel filled with tips 
I've got a whole YouTube channel filled with tips about how to get guys. All right. If you want to know about getting guys, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to our channel. Make sure to hit the bell notification so that you get your tips on how to meet guys. Yes, I've got tips. I've got all kinds of tips. I'll give you tips all day long. I'll, I'll, I've got tips everywhere. What kind of tips do you want? What kind of tips do you want? All right, I got I got a little out of control there. Got a little out of control. Whew. All right, all right, what do we got next? Actually, I learned complimenting from you, Miss Paranoid Android says. I'm in a great new relationship and compliments work. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. We've got a testament to compliments right here, right now. Guys love compliments. I love compliments. I love when you give me compliments. But I really meant what I said about you. You've got a beautiful mind. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate, you know what? It, it takes one to know one. And if you can see the beautiful mind in me, I'm pretty sure that you've got a beautiful mind as well. And so that's awesome. So thank you so much for the compliment. I love it. I love it. So Prissa says, I'm in a friend with benefits relationship and have fallen in love. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I hear that. But to he, he too, but he don't want to make it exclusive and am leaning back and letting him take the lead. Is that okay? Well, yes. However, here's the thing. If you're giving him what he wants and you're not getting what you want, it doesn't sound to me like you're really valuing yourself. You need to make sure that you're, you've got, you're, you're respecting yourself and that you're valuing yourself and that you're getting what you need and what you want out of the relationship as well. And if you're not, why are you playing a game where you're letting somebody win and letting yourself lose, right? And if you're okay with not being in a real relationship, then that's fine. Stay in this friend with benefits relationship. But if you want, if you want something more, then you need to make that part of the deal. It's part of the deal with having sex with you and being in a relationship with you is that you have the exclusivity. You know, you're doing it for your protection. You're doing it. Number one, for everybody else that's listening out there, don't get into friend with benefits relationships. Just don't do it. Stop. Just stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully after all those stop it's you stop it. All right. Don't get into friend with benefits relationships. If you do and you end up catching feelings, he's got feelings as well, which means that he's, he likes you, but he's either scared or there's something else that's stopping him. My suggestion is that you don't stay in a situation that's not good for you. You know, get, get out of the situation and only get back into a situation that works for you. And so here are the two things that you need to do. One, don't sleep with a guy unless there's some kind of exclusivity. And two, don't move in with a guy if you want marriage, unless you're married, unless he's putting that ring on your finger, do not move in with a guy. Those are my suggestions. If you want to be married at some point, that's what you should do. I think you should go out and start meeting other guys and start talking to other guys and start dating other guys and just cut him out until he decides that he wants to be in a real relationship with you. So Judy says Facebook live limits the length in comments. So sometimes people finish their, Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I didn't know that actually. I did finish it. Did you see the rest of it? I didn't see the rest of it. I've called him a handsome and he said, thank you. I've invited him to a church event, but he did not come. Well, you shouldn't be the one pursuing him. Do not pursue a guy if you want a relationship with him, because what's going to end up happening is you're going to do everything in the relationship. You need to lean back. You need to let, if he's interested, if he wants it, he will pursue you. And if he doesn't, he won't, right? And it, you can't have every guy 
on the planet. You can't have any guy on the planet, right? Some will, some won't. And there's things that you can do to make yourself be more attractive. And I can tell you one thing that won't make you be more attractive. And that's trying to pursue and chase him. That will make you less attractive because it lowers your power. It lowers your value, right? You're a woman. You're uh, someone that, that should be cherished and, and loved and, and looked at as amazing. And you want him to be the man and pursue you and invest in you and do the things that you want him to do. And if he's not willing to do that, or he's not in a place to do that, or he's already in a relationship or whatever, then you should start seeing other guys, start dating other guys, start making sure that you're getting into other situations with other guys. And if you've invited him to church or whatever, then he knows you're interested. That's it. He knows you're interested. And so go on with your awesome self and continue to live your life and do awesome things. And if he wants to be a part of it, then he will come and pursue you and he will get it together. And if he doesn't, or he's scared or whatever, you know, let him, let him deal with his own issues in his own way. And when he's ready, he'll come or he won't. And it's not up to you whether you, you can't make people do everything, right? Like there's certain ways to kind of encourage people and say, Hey, this is what I want. And, you know, give them the path and be like, Hey, this is what leads you to the promised land of us being in a great relationship together, but they have to walk the path. They have to walk the path to the promised land. And if they aren't willing to walk the path, there's only so much that you can do to force them to walk the path. Vic says this one guy told me I stole in his heart. I've stolen his heart. And we made plans to meet on Sunday, Mother's Day. And then he called me and said he was still at church and can't make it. And I haven't heard from him since. Yep, that will happen. That will happen. Mary says, what kind of signs do you mean in a guy? Actually, me, I'm also, me also, I'm online dating too. What kind of signs you mean in a guy? I'm not sure what you're asking. Like what signs should you look for? Honestly, I don't think you should look for any signs. I think you should assume that if a guy is interested in you, that he will pursue you, that he will move things forward and that he will want to be around you. And if he's doing those things, then he's interested in you. And that's the only sign that you need right? And if he's not doing those things, he may be interested in you and he may not be interested in you, but he's not doing the things that you need, that you need to have the relationship that you want. And so he needs to do those things. And if he doesn't, then there's only so much, there's only so much you can do. There's only so much that you can do. How do I get a guy that I've been seeing for a while to actually go out on a date with me without me asking him out? So you've been seeing him. Are you in a relationship with him? Are you living together? What does it mean that you are seeing him? And you even put it in quotes, seeing him. Are you like a friend with benefits with him? Hmm. 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 First thing that we need to do, I, look, <clears throat> look, ladies, <clears throat> we need to have a chat. I need to have a conversation with you about something that's, that's really important. It's really important to all of us. It's important to you. It's important to me. It's important to men. You need to start valuing yourself. You need to respect yourself. You need to start setting a higher standard for what you allow into your life. It needs to stop being this, oh, he's a hot guy and I want to have sex with him. And it needs to start being, he's a man and he's moving things towards the type of relationship that I want to have. And if a guy isn't doing that, then you need to Stop seeing him. Stop letting him use you for the things that he wants without getting what you want in return. You need to get what you want. You need to start valuing yourself and respecting yourself enough to get what you want. You need to do it. 
You got to do it. And if you're having a problem with that and you're like, I'm not sure how to start valuing and respecting myself, I suggest you join and sign up for free on the Goddess Club. It's thegoddesscommunity.com. Go check it out. Click the link in the description and join for free. And Anya's got an awesome program that you can check out in there that'll help you start being into the emotions where you actually value yourself and you respect yourself and you won't settle for things less than what you really deserve. So do that. Do that. That's number one. Number one is knowing that you deserve the relationship that you actually want. That's, that's step number one. So if you're, once you're doing that, then it, it becomes a lot easier to, to have that. And I don't know what you mean by seeing a guy. If you mean by having sex with him, then you need to stop doing that until he starts and, and completely pull back from whatever it is and be like, look, I, I need this. And it's hard to do because when you've already kind of set this frame, right? I talk in my love frames toolkit about this idea of framing, right? And frames are like the kind of the overarching meaning and like what a relationship is. If you've been in this frame of I'm allowing you to use me for sex without, you know, making sure that you're investing in me and being with me and all these things, the longer you're in that, the harder it is to change. And so you want to start things out on the right foot. And I know that a lot of times that's not what you want to hear. And there are things that you can do, but it's really, really hard, right? It's like, it's like that guy that's been orbiting around you for years now, right? And he's your best bud and you think you're, you're such good friends and you, you just love each other so much and you can tell him anything. And every time there's a bad guy, you always go to him and cry. And then one day he's like, I want to have sex with you. And you're like, whoa, what? Like we aren't there at all. That's not happening. And it starts becoming creepy and stuff. And you're just like, okay, get away from me. Right. And that happens because you've been in this frame of friendship for so long and you don't see him that way and you haven't seen him that way and you see him and that as gross with him for so long that it, it, it like it's hard for him to get over that hump and it's hard for you too if you've been in this friend with benefits situation for a really long time to kind of shift that. So Helena Hart says, Matt gives the best advice. You are awesome, Helena. Thank you so much. I think you give some amazing advice. I think you, people, people love and like you and you're amazing. So thanks, Helena. You're great. You're great. Thanks for being here. Helena is always here supporting me. Helena is a great friend. She's a great friend to have. She's amazing. And I think she's just fantastic in every way. And beautiful. Helena is also beautiful. Gloria Venti says, I'm going to meet someone and we are going to spend three bites together. We have been chatting and texting for about a month. Is this a good idea? Well, I, th oh, you, did you mean nights and not bites? I wouldn't spend three nights together with a guy that I haven't, <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend three nights together with a guy I haven't met, but I, I'm not gay. So that, that would probably make sense, but no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I don't know. It's, it's hard because you can't, you, you don't know, you don't really know this guy, right? Like you think you know him and maybe you have a connection because you've been talking and chatting and texting, but you don't really know this guy. You need to meet people like meet people. I mean, it's okay. What I do is just kind of find out, right? Like it, it's a bad, it's kind of a bad situation to put yourself in, especially if you guys are going to be sleeping together for three nights and you guys haven't really met each other yet. I mean, it's kind of, like, yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know about that one. All right, so where are we? Vic says, I love all your tips, methods, and strategies. I even bought the recommended course. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for buying the recommended course. And I hope you get amazing amounts of value out of that. Oh, my God. Juliet Tree says, oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my God, you are so right, Matt. Marriage, definitely. That's right. Wait until marriage. He's not getting that. He's not getting on his knees until he put that ring on that finger. 
That's what you want to wait for. Thanks for that moving in and ring advice. Next step for me or us. Glad once more I'm watching. Yeah, you don't like there's so many situations, right? Because he's getting men have needs, right? Men have emotional needs. Men have physical needs. Men have spiritual needs. Men have all these kinds of different needs. And, and if you're giving him what he wants, you need to make sure that you're getting what you want as well. And if you want to get married, it needs to be a part of the process for you, for you. It needs to be a part of the process for you. All right. So Sylvia says, thanks for sharing. Good points for single ladies. Philippines, you're welcome. You're welcome, Sylvia. Lauren says, that's right, 100%. Right, 100%. Totally agree with your views on not doing. Please, please, ladies, stop doing friends with benefits. Saving sex for exclusivity. Some coaches say women are empowered. I do not think that women are empowered by sleeping around. That does not empower you. Yep, it, it just does not empower you. English Rose. Matt, do you think dating a guy who is five years younger than me is okay? I really want this relationship for a lifetime. Yeah. I, I know plenty of women. There's women in our community, plenty of women in our community that date guys that are 10, 15 years younger than they are. And I, I know people that are married. I know women that are, we have women in our community that are married to guys that are 10 years younger than them. And it's a great relationship and they do really well. And it's, it's, everybody has different needs and different desires for what they want. Yeah, Sharon says, not in a relationship, friend with benefits. Yep, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what it means when you're seeing each other. You need to not just see each other. You need to make it a requirement that a guy treats you like a queen. And if he's not treating you like a queen, he ain't getting that sugar. That's, that's a requirement. It's a requirement. It's a requirement. Don't let a guy get his needs met and not get yours. Stop the friend with benefits. Stop it. Just stop it. I need a man, not a boy. Tired of the games with him. My heart is broken. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. Games suck. Crystal says, me and a guy have been talking for two weeks and haven't met yet. When a guy says he don't want to marry again, but does want a committed relationship, is it still a lifetime commitment? Maybe, you know, there's, there's a lot of guys that it, you, you might want to have him clarify it, right? I mean, if you're, here's the thing, right? A lot of women are afraid to talk to guys about what guys actually want because there's a lot of guys that will hide what they want and not talk about it and all those kinds of things. If, if he, if you want to do that, if this is going to be a lifetime thing, you need to have a real conversation with them. And if he avoids that conversation, it tells you a lot about what's going on. I don't think this guy will, since he's willing to tell you that he wants a committed relationship. What you want to find out is what, what does he mean by that? What is, what does he mean by that? Right? Because commitment actually means different things to different people. There are lots of women who are in this, in this live stream with us right now who think commitment means something completely different than other women. So you want to find out commitment generally though, does mean like something like a lifetime commitment or two people that are committed exclusive with each other and committed to making a relationship work, right? That's another kind of way that people might define commitment. So you want to find out what he means exactly. Sharon says, Matt, my darling. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. I do value myself. That's why I didn't put all my eggs in one basket. I am dating other people and keeping my options open. Yeah. And I would stop letting him stop letting him do that with you. If you don't stop letting him get all of his needs met, if he's not willing to meet yours, talk about it time and time again, I'm going to say it until everybody, until everybody understands what I'm saying. So Sissy says, talk to a guy for a month, met twice. He's, he always chased me. He agreed to go slow and no sex. I got scared. He was, wasn't really divorced and asked him, he texts back, sorry, you feel this way. I'm not married and ghosted me. Hmm. 
Hmm, strange, huh? Strange behavior. A lot of times women are like, what is this strange behavior that this man is, is doing over here? Why is it so strange? Well, it's strange because there's something strange going on with him. And so he's acting strangely because there's something weird going on with him. There's something weird, something weird going on with him. And so he's acting strangely. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't. There's something there. There's something there. Who knows what it is? We'd have to see more about what was going on, what he said, and what is going on with his relationship, if he's got one, to somebody else. Might be married. There's men out there that do the marriage thing. There's women that do that as well. So don't can't just hate on men with all this stuff where you're like, oh, well, there's men out there that are married and they're dating other women. There's women that do it as well. Women all over the place that are married and out there dating and having sex with other guys. Miss Paranoid Android says, agreed. Always give him a hint of a doubt. If it gets too lazy, pull away. Men need, men, it's true. Men do need to feel like, you know, you're, it's possible that you might leave them at any point in time if they don't, you know, cause it, not always, right. He doesn't always need to feel that, but he does. If you're kind of moving towards things and it's like, he thinks he's just going to sit around and wait and just have this great friend with benefits relationship with you. He needs to not think that he needs to not feel that, right? Because if he does feel that he's never going to feel like he needs to move anything any further with you. He needs to feel like if he doesn't move things further and get into the kind of relationship and start giving you your needs that you're going to walk away because you respect yourself too much to stay in a relationship where you're not getting your needs met. Helena Hart says, oh, say all back. Oh, it's oh. where we're at. It's where we're at. All right. So sweet unknown says I've been dating someone long distance. How can I bring up the topic of how to move forward in the relationship without scaring them away? I'd have to know a lot more about your long distance relationship here. Melly says, thanks Matt for your advices. Learned a lot from you in dating and relationships, how to get back to a guy that didn't hear from him. Ghosted me five months now waiting for his apology. Why are you <laughs> okay, well, I mean, okay, so if he ghosted you five months ago and he hasn't gotten back to you and here's what you need to do, right? So he, here's one of the problems that we have a lot in the dating world. A lot of people feel like they need some kind of something for the other person to do that in order for them to like be able to move on. You need to like just forgive and move on with your life. And if he wants to come back and apologize, great. If not, that's fine too. It's not your responsibility to get a guy who acted poorly to apologize to you. That's, you know, he's either going to apologize or he's not. And if he does, that's great. And if he doesn't, then that's, that's his business and you're not going to be in his life. And he doesn't get the amazingness of you with him. Stephania says, also women have needs. That's what we've been talking about this whole live stream. Women have needs. Crystal says, thanks, Matt, for your help. You are absolutely welcome. Sissy says, exactly. Stephanie says, probably lying in my opinion. Just saying. Probably. I mean, he's acting weird. He's acting weird. I think that's what you're talking about. Victoria says, best excuse ever not. Asked him to clarify his exact notion of separation. Asked him if his wife knew they were separated. His answer, I don't see the point of upsetting her. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy talk. People out there trying to get all these weird things going on. Trying to get them weird things going on. Matt, when a guy gives you his number and says, call him or text him anytime, should I give him my number and wait for him to call me or should I call him first? Yeah, you should get first off. Like I said earlier, stop giving out your number, create an Instagram account and fill it with awesome photos of yourself. And if you don't have awesome photos, start making awesome photos, start 
being unashamed about taking selfies and getting pictures of you taken where you're doing fun things and go have a good life and have fun and give guys your Instagram information. When he gives you your, your, his phone number, say, Hey, I don't take phone numbers from guys. Sorry. Like I would love to talk to you, but here's my Instagram account. Follow me. I'll follow you back. Send me a message and ask me out on a date and you know, <laughs> we can go out on a date, right? He's trying to control the frame, right? He's trying to set it up so that you start chasing him, right? And if you get into that and you start chasing him, it's going to lead you into a place that you don't want to be. So my suggestion is that you don't do that. So Stephanie says... Do we really have to be mean and basically thump heads? Girl, you should be thumping heads every chance you get. There's a rabbit that pokes his hole out. You thump his head. That's what you do. You thump head. No. I, okay. So basically thump heads and threaten to leave. So stop. So, okay. It, it's not just threatening to leave, right? You're not just threatening to leave. You're just, it's not like, hey, I'm going to threaten you with leaving and I'm going to leave and whatever, right? It's like, hey, I, I have these needs, right? And I, one of them is this, right? Whatever it is, right? I, I, I want to be treated like a queen. And I, if a man treats me like a queen, I will treat him like a king. And if I'm not being treated like a queen, then I'm not willing to partake in whatever kind of situation it is that you've been partaking in where you haven't been treated like a queen. And so if he's not taking you out on dates or whatever, right? If he's not meeting, meeting up with you and doing these things that are part of the deal to be with you, then what are you doing? Right? What are you doing? I, I don't know what specific situation you're talking about where you think some men are more mature than that, but men are going to, it's the same with women. Like, don't think that this is just men. Men are going to treat women, you know, horribly if they can. Women do the exact same thing, right? People treat us the way that we allow them to treat us. And if we don't demand that, if we don't make it a requirement that people treat us well, then they're going to treat us however we allow them to treat us. And if they can just get away with treating us like crap, they will. And if we stop that and we go, look, in order for you to be with me in a relationship, like you, you have to be a mature adult and you have to, you know, be like this because that's the only way that I'm willing to be in a relationship with somebody. I, I need honesty. I need integrity. I need somebody that values me. I need somebody that treats me well and I will treat you well. Right. And if you're not getting that, then it's like, what are you doing? right? You don't have to thump heads. You don't have to thump heads on a guy, but what are you, what are you doing? You know, really like, what are you doing with this guy? Are, are you sleeping with him? Are you, you know, what, what are you doing? What's, what, what are you, what's happening with him that you're getting that he's getting that, and you're not getting what you need. You know, there, you don't have to thump heads. You just have to make it a requirement. You have to make it so that you value yourself and you're like, this is what I want. This is number one. If you want to be in a relationship with me, this is part of the requirement. If you want to have sex with me, this is part of the requirement. If you want to move in with me, if you want me to move in with you, this is part of the requirement. I need these things. And if I don't get these things, it's fine. It's not a big deal, but just don't be surprised when I go somewhere where I get it. All right. So what's the next one? Gazal, 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 Gazal. What should I do if I over texted him and now he is completely ignoring me when he was originally the one who found me on IG and asked me out and we have been talking daily for three months. You need to lean back. Number one step is lean back. We talk about it all the time. 
If you're being leaning forward, you need to be leaning back. If you're leaning forward, you got to lean back. Just lean back. Let him pursue you. Let him chase you. Let him lead. Chill out. Relax. Go, go sip a cocktail. Go get a Mai Tai. Go hang out somewhere. Go live your life. Go date other men. Go do whatever. And let him come and start leading and pursuing. That's what you need to do. Miss Paranoid Android says, love the king and queen advice. We'll use it tomorrow. All right. Steph, Stephania says, very good advice. Thank you. You're welcome. You're absolutely welcome. Gazal says, but we never met in person yet. Oh. <laughs> what? Well, what are you even worried about then? You've never met in person yet? You guys don't even actually know each other. Just texted daily for three months. Stop it. Just stop it. Go back to the beginning of this video and rewatch it because number one thing we need to talk about is using texting to meet in person because that's what magic happens. That's the magic. My dear, my dear gazelle, gazel, gazel, you are the magic. And in person is where your magic happens. And he loves that magic. So you need to meet him in person. Stop doing the texting for three months over Instagram thing and start meeting people in person. Number one. Swati says, if a guy is chasing you since a long time saying he is single, but from his social media and mutual friends, you already know he has another woman already in his life. What to do next? Love from Germany. Well, he's saying that he's single. I mean, he's a liar, right? He's lying to you and saying that he's single and he's not. I, you know, that's a huge red flag. It's a huge red flag, right? He wants to, he wants to tell you he's single, but you know, for a fact, everybody's telling you he's not single. I mean, in this case, you need to listen to other people, right? If he's not single, then he's not single. And if he, you know, I, I mean, you, you can confront him, confront him about it. You know, you can just be like, Hey, look, you know, all these people are telling me that you're not single. Is that true? You know, like, you know what I mean? Cause if, if he's, if he's actually not single, right. And you're, you know, going to meet with this guy or, or you're not going to ever meet him because he's not, you, you need to find out from him. Let him explain it. Let him talk to you about it. And if he gives you some wishy washy, crazy nonsense, then you know that you don't want to, you don't want to talk to him anymore. Gazelle says, I'm really trying to meet him in person. Okay. Well, you need to stop trying to meet him in person. I need to find out how to meet this guy in person. You don't need to find out how to meet this guy in person. It's, it's really not that complicated. He will meet you in person, right? And you set the standard that he needs to meet you in person and that, look, look, I love to talk to you, but I need, I need real people in my life. This whole, you know, messaging over Instagram thing for the rest of our lives, that that's, this doesn't work for me. And if you want to meet up and talk for real, then like, then we'll have real conversations. I'm not just going to be your pen pal and give you emotional validation over Instagram. If you want to meet up, let's meet up. If not, I got other, I got other men to meet other things to do other worlds to explore things, life to live gold to go mine. I don't know what you do in your free time, but point is you're not just hanging out waiting. Stephanie says, yes, thanks. I left the situation long distance and I felt like I was part-time suspected. He was married cheater. He's the one asking to be exclusive and I was the one trying to leave. Okay. Swati says, thanks for the advice. You are right. Lying in itself is a huge, yeah, it's a major red flag. All right. I got to go. I got to go. It's time for me to go. Thank you everybody for being here. Make sure that you click the link below and go to the goddesscommunity.com to sign up for free to the inner circle goddess club program. So thank you everybody for being here. You're the most amazing part of our program and what we're doing. And so thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey and trusting me with what's going on with you. So thank you so much. And 
I will speak with you again soon.